I invested my money in two things. Yeah. One, my business. Uh -huh. And two, I got married. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good way to spend money. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Dambuza and welcome to another exciting episode of Vastly Sage here on YouTube. I've got an amazing guest today and I am so excited about this conversation because he embodies excellence and ah, nothing I love more. Uh, Theo Ngoveni, thank you so much for being here. Theo is um, the founder of Mr. Slimfit and we're going to talk today about tailoring your services to your clients tailoring <laughs> because that is what he does mr slimfit a brand that i have come to really respect not just in how you as the entrepreneur behind the brand portrays itself but the workmanship and and something to be said about excellence where did it all start you graduated with a finance and investments degree how did you end up making clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, thank you so much for having me, Amanda. It's, uh, it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to be oh, sitting here with you. Thank you. Um, sure, where did it start? I've, I've always loved clothes. Yes. I've always, I've always been that guy, you know, even at work. It's an tanta. <laughs> yeah, it's an <laughs> From Pretoria. Um, so, went to school. Um, I mean, initially when I was young, I wanted to study interior uh, design oh yes uh, but my parents being a firstborn <laughs> like what's that interior design <laughs> it's not gonna fly go and do i think back then the the the, the, the big careers were like uh, chartered accountants yes. and, and yeah lawyer and IT. engineering yes, yes those are the big careers and um i said okay cool i'll go the finance route yes so i went to the university of pretoria i did my bcom in finance mm. and did my honors in investments and then graduated um fortunately enough i was you know um, able to get a, a graduate program into the mm. graduate program of uh, rain merchant bank yeah and that's where i started um i was started uh, in an investment bank <laughs> hey some people have always lived the soft life <laughs> what can i say it's born for it, <laughs> born for it. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's where it all started. So I was um, I was I was a forex dealer, uh -huh. but not the ones that scam yeah. people on Facebook. No. <laughs> a real one. A real one. <laughs> um, and I mean, even through that, I've I've always um, my wardrobe. I remember when I was doing my honors, I used to buy the the GQ. Yes. And they had um, two of the of the features. I think in one in May and one in August. Yeah. So they would have a supplement yes, where the one yes. in May would have like a winter fashion and the one in September would have like the summer. <laughs> I remember I had those two and I remember I used to page and I'd be like, ah, oh, when I will start working, this is how I want to dress. Oh. And I kept it. Even when I started working, I still have, I still had them. And I remember yes. there was this one particular gray suit. This guy was wearing a well-tailored gray suit, mm. white shirt, navy tie with yellow stripes, nice. brown shoes. And I was like, this is how I want to look oh, when I go to work. So you always knew? I always knew. Oh, and how was your experience in corporate and, and what, what prompted this, this jump eventually to be an entrepreneur? Uh, my experience was and good. In particular, I mean, you're, you're pas you were passionate about fashion, yes. right? But yes. I mean, just jumping from an investment banking career to being an entrepreneur, what prompted that? So my experience was good in corporate. Yes. I actually enjoyed it. I I loved it. Um, ah, but you were making big bucks. I mean, dealers <laughs> at the time. I remember they were traders. <laughs> yeah, between R and B and Investec, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis. Well, I was not there yet. I just started. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed the the hustle and the bustle. Yes. You know, dealing room is. It's a life, mm. you know. One day is never the same, yes. so you, you never know when you go to work what, what to expect. Yeah, and that's what I liked about it, and the fact that I didn't have to take work home. Yeah, you know, I walked into the office, right. locked onto the uh, system. Yes. I work when the mar market closes at five. I've you got my life down. after yeah. after that, yeah. and that's where I started staying after work and started watching um, YouTube uh, channels of you know fashion stylists and fashion buyers uh, mm. from overseas. Mm. So I used to do that li like religiously after work. Oh, and wow. that's where, you know, the passion started to develop even more. Yes. And then I started my, my blog, my Facebook page, mm. which was called Slim Fit Swag. Yes. And I started advising men about um, fashion and that's how it grew. So you became an image consultant. Uh, yeah. Unofficial. <laughs> Unofficial. <laughs> but guys loved it and they would reach out and 
you know, ask, I'm going to an event this weekend. Yes. I don't know what to wear. What should I wear? And I'd advise them. And funny enough is when they send me a, a, an inbox, yes. they would say, dear Mr. Slimfit Swag. Hey. And that's where the Mr. Slimfit came oh, okay. from. Okay. <laughs> and what year was this when you started it? I started the page in 2011. Okay. So it grew. I mean, by 2014, I had about 35,000 followers. Really? And back then it was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think it's still a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it grew. And yes. I think over time, even, even my colleagues, you know, the, some of them would come to me and say, listen, I'm looking for a suit. Or I'm looking for shoes. Uh, where can I find? Mm. I, I knew, I'd say, what type of shoes are you looking for? Mm. Is it brown? Is it lace up? Is it yes. what? Then I'll give them a few shops that, where you can find it. Um, because that, that's what I used to do. And we, 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 we'll talk about that in a moment because your, you, your business has evolved to more than just suits yes, or, yes, clothes, you know, yeah. uh, just clothes. You, you, I mean, the most amazing shoes. <laughs> I love men's shoes too. So <laughs> every time I see your shoes there, I'm like, wow. <laughs> and and um, but how did you find your business? Whew, that's, that's a good question. So my transition, <clears throat> to go back to your question, mm. I got to a point where I liked what I did. Um, I was comfortable, mm. but I was not fulfilled. Mm. And I've always had that hunger of being fulfilled, you know. So for me, I thought, you know, there's got to be more to life than just working and paying Chasing bills. Chasing the market. Yeah. Mm. And so I decided, uh, I think luckily enough for me, I already had a passion. Yes. And I knew I could, I could convert it into a business. Mm, mm. That's when I decided it was the 11th of August, 2014. Hey. It was a Thursday. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, that's when I decided I'm, I'm actually going to follow my passion. Yes. And, but I said, you know what? I'm going to work for the rest of the year, uh, for the rest of 2014. Mm. And I will start then in 2015. Yes. <clears throat> And I remember it was um, three days after 10.30, mm. I handed in my resignation letter. It was on the 5th of October, 5th mm. of October, 2014. But I told, I, told, I told my employer, I said, it's fine, I'll work for three months. Yes. You know, the rest of the, yeah. the year I'll, I'll work, but this is where I'm going. And I think they also understood when I told them what I'm going to do. Mm. They're like, okay, it makes sense. Mm. We know what you love and where your passion yes. lies. So, you know, they gave me the blessing. And that's and where And the started. funding? The funding, so I decided, <laughs> just like a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, I cashed out my Ah, yes. Because I remember I was watching Shark Tank, <laughs> and I think it was uh, Vinny uh, who said, uh, um, entrepreneurs don't have pension funds. Yeah. They have investments. Mm. And I was like, okay, that's very profound. Mm. So if I'm going to go into this thing, I need to go all in. Yes, So yes. I cashed in everything. I invested my money in two things. Yeah. One, my business, uh -huh. and two, I got married. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good way to spend money. <laughs> so you got married around the time you were starting your business. And and so you having this two life-changing yes, events. events happening at the same time. Well, actually, not just two, three was you leaving your job. Oh, yeah. That's a fundamental yes. shift yes, as well. True. So how do you mentally, how did you mentally prepare yourself for that? this new life? Um, you know, sometimes you think you're ready for things until yeah. they happen. Yeah. Um, but I think for me is I, I'm a risk taker yes. and I adapt easily to change. Mm, uh, mm, that's the one thing mm. that I, I am. So even though it wasn't easy, I knew, I didn't expect it to be easy. Because yes. I said the first year, I'm going into a new industry. I know nothing about, nobody knows me in that space. Mm. So I was willing to learn. Yes. I mean, I started from the bottom. I did everything. I did. If Amanda said, listen, I have a shoot. I'm mm. looking for somebody who's going to steam. I'm there. Mm. You know? So I started and I, I, I put the word out there to say, if you know somebody who's looking for an assistant yes. or whatever. And that's how I started. Nice. I learned and that helped me to develop, uh, to also um, um, develop my network, yes, you know, because yes, then yes. There, there were people who knew what I did and, you know, the word can go out and that's mm, how it started. Mm. Um, and over time, then it, it transitioned. Do you think humility is a key ingredient to success as an entrepreneur? It's, it's one of them, yes. Mm. Yes. How has, how has that, I mean, I think this is one of the examples you just said, that mm. you were willing to do whatever it took. Mm. But a lot, of, a lot of people want to be successful entrepreneurs, but they don't want to put in the work, no. right? <laughs> I mean, you left August 2014, I left May 2014. And oh. I was also like, come next year, I'm out of here. Yes. I'm going to go do my thing. So 
but I knew that I was starting, whilst I may have been a successful corporate yes. executive, yes. I was now starting a whole new life mm -hmm. where nobody knew Knows me yes. as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which also meant I had to start from rock bottom, literally learn everything yes. from scratch, right? And do you, f I find humility is critical and you're saying the same thing. What is it about um, humility that helps you become a better entrepreneur? What do you think it is? Because you have a teachable spirit. Mm. You are willing to learn. Yes. So you don't, like, I love what you said because I said the same thing to somebody to say, when, when I left my job, I, I was becoming an expert in my field. Yes, I went yes. into a new field. I'm an amateur. Yeah. Nobody knows me. Yeah. I need to start from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. my degree doesn't matter. Where I used to work doesn't matter yeah. anymore. It's I'm about in a new space. Now. Yes. I'm in a new space. If I want to learn, I need to be humble. Mm. And mm. when you have humility, people are they're willing to share. Yes. They're willing to share yes. with you because they see the drive, they see the hunger. And you are nothing is above you mm. and nothing is beneath you. Yes. You know, yes. You, because you are there, you're eager. And I think that shows people that you have a teachable spirit. Yes. If somebody comes and says, I'm sure you get this a lot, Amanda, please mentor me. Mm. I mean, you look at the attitude as well. To yeah, say, of course. Do you have a teachable spirit? Yeah. What are you willing to, you know? Yeah. Because everybody wants My something. My answer is standard no. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to check out yes. all those things and see why I should change my no yes, to yes. That's true. Yes, that's true. Yes. So I think humility gives you a teachable spirit. Yes. And oh, Jesus, nothing teaches you more than entrepreneurship. Eh? Yeah. Because now everything falls on your lap. You are everything. So you cashed out your pension. Yes. I did the same, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's entrepreneurship. If you're not willing to risk nah, it you're all, not an then you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> and, and for me, though, I put it into the business, enabled yes, the business, yeah. and the business had to pay me back. Yeah. Has your business paid you back? It, it, you know, business is a, I always say it's a continuous thing. Yes. So it did pay me back. Yes. And, and then, then you I had to, to put, put it, it back, back again. <laughs> 10 years later, I'm still putting something yeah. in yeah. as no, well. You, you never stop. <laughs> business is like a child. You yeah. never stop raising, yes. raising them. You know, yes. you always have to take care of them. And um, it's a long term game. Yes. And I always say to people, you need to be patient. You can't be in business if you love instant gratification. Yes. Yes. There is no way. No, it doesn't come. Get rich quick income. It does not work like that. And and I mean your your service. Tell 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 my viewers who all those who don't know you. First of all, I mean I'm wearing your shirt, <laughs> which you custom made for me recently yes, yeah. for my 45th birthday. I told you I was gonna wear this shirt <laughs> time and again. <laughs> you love it. I know how much you love it. I really do. I really do. So so tell me a bit more about what you actually do. Like what are some of your you, because we can say you make clothes, but that's not really yeah. just, that's not just a business. Yes. That's just an outcome of your business. Yes. So what, what do you do on a daily basis? What does your day look like? <sighs> First so, of all, you've got amazing premises. So thank you. Thank you so there's much. There's also whiskey and champagne and sweets <laughs> and things. <laughs> so I can imagine work is fun. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it is fun. So I've actually found a fancy way of describing what I do. Yeah. Um, I now call myself a lifestylist. <laughs> sounds rich <laughs> <I know. laughs> so for me is it started the ultimate ultimate goal has always been to be a lifestylist yes but it had to start somewhere mm. and it started with clothes yeah so we do so mr slim fat we do <clears throat> everything bespoke yeah so we do custom-made suits shirts dresses shoes um everything do, bespoke everything bespoke. yeah um and what does bespoke mean so it means it doesn't mean that it's it's we just measure you and and that's it. You yeah. Know, I, I look at I look at your body structure. I look at your how how you the shape of your body. Yes. Um, your lifestyle requirements in terms of I mean I have clients who come in and say I need a pink suit, but it doesn't fit their lifestyle requirements. Yeah. So we, yes. we 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 tailor it to be specific to fitted to your personality, your lifestyle, your profession, and make sure that it 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 uh, it encompasses everything that you are. But how do you let a client down, Theo? Because a, a, you know your clients, they'll see something worn by somebody somewhere mm -hmm. and they think, oh, I definitely want that. You know, how everyone wants, oh, it looks nice on somebody yes, else. Yes, I also yes, want yes, it. Yes. So, so what, is, what is that approach to advising your clients? Because I would, I would, from what you're saying now, see that your role is also more an advisory yes. type of role to say, actually, you know what, 
that's not necessary. Yes, that's what yes. how, how, how do they take it? How do you go about that? No, I think because of, I always say people come to me because they, they're looking for an expert. Mm. Um, I don't sell clothes, I sell solutions. Mm. Um, so when you come into me, you're looking for solutions. Uh -huh. And I'm uh -huh. there to advise you and to guide you properly. Yes. Um, so when, when I, how I do say it, I make sure that it, it lands appropriately. Mm. So if somebody comes, if you come a Monday and say, I'm looking for a green suit, I'm going to one, two, three event. And so it, in the way, in our conversation, I start by asking you, I mean, for your four, uh, for 45th, I said, when is it? Yes. What time is it? Where's the venue? Where's, yeah. So all of those things makes you curious. Why am I looking to mm. find out all of these things? Mm. And then when I break it down, say, actually, what you're looking for is not going to work. Mm. It's not the type of environment yes, that you're going into. Yes, yes, So that's how I break it down. It's like people going to a, a garden party and they wear high heels. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say, look at the environment, yes. dress accordingly, accordingly and yeah. make sure that you're comfortable and you're respecting the invite as well. So, so, so now, I mean, you, you, you do something very exciting. It's bespoke, yes. right? It's, it's tailored to the individual. Yes. And, and I think that on its own is a very niche offering because, I mean, a lot of people are used to just mass produce stuff, you know, mm -hmm. because that's the quickest thing. Even, even some of the high end designers, those things are not bespoke. <laughs> they are, they are off the off the rail. They're yeah. mass produced, right? Which means that you might buy it and you might have to go tuck in the yes. waist. You might have to yes. tuck in the arms and yes. stuff like that. So I, I think it's important to say this because sometimes people think that high-end brands and designer brands are somewhat bespoke. No, they're luxury no. brands, but mm. they're not bespoke. Yes. And, and the importance of actually having a bespoke service is about ensuring that you accentuate everything that is about you, your lifestyle, your environment, where you are. Yeah. I think you should make me your manager. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Can pay me in suits. <laughs> You've got a deal. <laughs> so, so, so what is, how did you find the business of the business? Because whilst it, you're creative, you love nice clothes, you'd probably ra would rather just stick with that yes. and keep going to fashion week somewhere mm, in Paris, mm, Milan. Mm. That's, the, that's the glamorous part of yes. it. But this is a business. Yes. So how did you find that transition into, it's still t till today, the business of the business? So for me, I've always said I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, I'm running a business first yes. and foremost. Yes. As much as I love this, but at the, at the end of the day, I'm running a business. Mm. And I think my, my background in finance and corporate has yes. helped me. So I always say corporate taught me structure. Mm. And, 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 you know, principles and, and uh, protocols that you have to put in place. Yes. Um, it taught me that. And I brought that into the business. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and that's what I'm carrying on, you know, even going forward. Hence, uh, I always say I'm, I'm a very, uh, I'm a risk taker, but I'm very conservative. Yeah. At the same time. I'm conservative with calculated, calculated risk. risks. Yes. You know, yes. so, I mean, I also had to learn, I remember, because I'm, I'm very, um, I, I don't like debt. Yeah. I, you know, in my personal capacity, I'm, I don't yes. like debt. My debt is yes. like minimum. But then I had to learn that in business, debt is good. Yes. And it was a... You need it for it, growth. It was a weird transition. Yes. To say debt is good yes. in business. Yeah, yeah, and for yeah, me, yeah. it was weird. So I, I, I had to learn some of the things that um, how I manage my personal finances mm. can't be the same way that I manage the mm. business finances. Mm. Um, and also for me, it was, like I said, being, having a teachable spirit, finding mentors yes. um, who were in business. And I think, luckily, a lot of my clients are in business. Ah, yes. So yes. when I found some of my first clients initially, um, they were in business and they were able to help me in terms of how to run a business, mm. how to put structures, how to do this, how to do that. Yeah. So for me, mentorship played a huge role. In fact, I think we, under, we underestimate how much mentorship plays a significant role in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. However, I also think people like to use it as a crutch yeah, that's true. to say, you know, I need a mentor, yeah, you know, I won't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But, but the truth is that sometimes people are just too scared to, mm -hmm. to do their thing. Mm -hmm. So having a mentor is like, no, I need someone who can literally like hold my hand. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, mm -hmm. even if you have a mentor, 
you still have to, to make the, the decision yeah. yourself. Yes. You still have to make the do the work yourself. Yes, that's true. And and I think that's so important. Do do you have a lot of people ask you to mentor you? I imagine this, right? Because yes, you're like you. you're like the epitome of class and <laughs> excellence you. and success, and <laughs> you. you ooze all of that. Uh, so you chose so the right business, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe chose you. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. So do you get a lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, I look up to you. You've done such an incredible job with your business. We love everything about you. How, how, how do you manage that? Because it can be a lot. It, it, it does. Um, I do. I do. Um, social media, especially. Mm. Um, so for me, it's... Um, I, look at, I, I look at the person's, you know, intentions. Mm. And so when, when a person says to me, can you please be my mentor? My first question is, what does that look like? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want you to help me with one, two, three. I'm like, no, those are not things I can help you with. Yes. You know, those are things that you need to... Yeah. help yourself with yeah. because like you're saying people hide behind it they want mm. crutches yeah. and it's not supposed to be like that yeah. I mean I have mentors they don't know they're my mentors mm. yeah. I've never even have to go and say formally say you are my please mentor. be my mentor yeah. Yeah, no yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's I, I, I run my business wherever I, I, I need support I will go and yes. say I know this one is good at one, two, three. I know this one is good at one, two, three. So I have different mentors mm. and they don't even know that they're my mentors exactly. because I didn't want to, because young people nowadays are so obsessed with, the with fact having that, oh, a mentor. Amanda is my mentor. Yeah. Actually, I think that's the obsession. Mm -hmm. The obsession is who is the mentor that's rather true. than, you know, the mentorship itself. It's like a social ticket. That's true. That's true. So for me, it's, I always say when a person says I want me there's a few questions I ask them yeah. to determine whether this person is yeah. serious or not or they're just looking for you know the ticket the, the association the association yeah. so for me it's I always say to people you can be mentored by people from afar just yes. by looking at them yes have you ever had a bad delivery service like have you ever ever messed up an order I have and, I have. <laughs> and how did I that go? <laughs> how did you how did you handle that because especially in your world I mean you're not exactly cheap, yeah. so <laughs> I mean, I did you hear that? that? I it said was... it under my breath. It's like... <laughs> That's why I don't want to entertain it. <laughs> no, no, you you are worth your service is worth every little bit of it. Thank so, you. but but it is bespoke. It mm, is you mm. know the people the, the and and maybe before the question about you know how did you handle a bad mm -hmm. experience or a bad delivery, it's because it's bespoke. Do you find that people hold you to a far higher standard? than they would other entrepreneurs generally? Um, honestly speaking, I don't. Mm. I hold myself to a higher standard. Ah, like uh -huh. I'm a perfectionist. I'm a, you've yeah. seen how I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, so for me, when people say, Amanda is difficult, Amanda yes. is too demanding, I'm like, no, she knows what she wants. Yes. And those are my clients. Yes. When I started my business, I said, I want those guys mm. to be my clients. And I understood what it takes. So for me, I hold myself to a high account. Yes. I can do something and the client could be absolutely happy. I'm like, ah, oh, you like, mm. oh, could have done better. Yeah. I'm like that. Yeah. So yeah, I always, yeah. the bar, I always set the bar too Very high. Very high. Yes. And that's why when people look at the business and they, they say it's excellent and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I could do better. Yes. Yeah. I could do better. And that's, that's good on the one end because it keeps you, yes. you're, 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 you keep learning and that's you keep true. growing. That's but true. it can also be that you're just very hard on yourself. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. I am. I am. So for me, it's, um, yeah, I love clients that come in and say, I want this like this, uh, the stitching, I, I want it like this. Can mm. I choose the stitch? Can I, can I, I, I love those type yes. of clients who are very pedantic and very particular uh, because also they challenge me yes you know they 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 help me to be better yes uh, i never see it as a as a like a, a stumbling block or for me it's it's a learning in fact they understand your offering yes yeah because a, a client that does that understands your yes offering. and the client that does that um, speaks to you on value mm. and not on price yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much so. So, so a bad experience you've had? Bad delivery? Yes, I I did. Oh, and it was for, it was for an event. Mm. And you know, events have a date yes. set. Yes. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> and unfortunately, we couldn't deliver on time because of things that were beyond my control. Yeah. Uh, but I, I had to. I had to. The first time it happened, it, it was hard. I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm. And I mean, it was, I think, back in 2017. Yeah. Um, and it, it was difficult. You know, you try and find how do you deal with this. The client is pissed. Yes. They, they don't want to hear anything. And um, so we ended up 
I ended up actually saying, you know what, you don't have to pay for it. Mm. Um, I take the blame. Yes. Um, I refunded what I need to refund. And when the things were done after the event, mm. I said, please still come because these were made for you. Yes. Uh, and yes. they did still come. And then we, I made sure I. I made sure I finished the service, even though we didn't deliver on time. Yes. I Have you sure. mended that relationship since? Yes, I did. I oh, did. Yeah. Because okay. it, it happened again for another one. <laughs> <laughs> when was it? I think it was last year. Um, same thing. Ah, you know, and it was an event as well. Yes. And it was stressful. <laughs> but so then events I had, are a problem. And you know what the thing is, Amanda? You know, in our business, when you tell people my turnaround time is three to four weeks, mm. they don't understand. No. They want to come two weeks before yeah. and, and expect miracles. Yeah. And, but I've learned to say I do not take things that I cannot deliver. Yeah. On. So mm. and some, I was at that point. This particular client is not just a client. You become a friend and a brother. And he mm. comes and like, ah, my man, you know. Yes, yes. We are people. Yes, yeah, guys, come on. Person. I know you can do it. Yes. I, I, and, and funny enough is he told me three months before the, I was like, okay, that's fine. We can do it. And he delayed coming. Oh. He, uh, him and um, a few people that were supposed to, they delayed coming. Mm. They came like four weeks before and I had to rush and do all of these things. And, and unfortunately I couldn't perform miracles. Mm. And, but I had to do something. Yes. Um, I ended up getting them, um, you know, something different. Yes, yes. But we made sure that they look, the, they have the look that they wanted yes. for that particular event. But I guess, and, and, and this conversation is about the fact that whilst you can hold yourself to the highest of standards and you can deliver this bespoke luxury service, mm -hmm. mistakes still do happen. They do. Sometimes you they fall do. short of your own standards, yes. you fall short of your own value system. And, and the conversation is really about ownership mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. when you do fall flat. And what I've found sometimes is that some entrepreneurs, in fact, some of these big local designers, mm -hmm. I've had them do something for me mm -hmm. and they mess it up. That no, same designer it. that I paid that big money to directly <laughs> is not the one that comes back and ah, says, I, I messed up, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. It, some other people come. Yes. And, and that for me puts me off completely. And I will stop supporting somebody who's like that. Because That's true. I'm not supporting, yes, I'm, I, I support, I'm supporting the service and the perfection that comes with it, mm. and, but I support more the entrepreneur. Mm. Mm. And if That's you true. cannot come to me and say, listen, I'm so sorry I messed up, mm. give me another chance. Mm. Or how about I make something different for you because this chiffon is not yes. working on yes. this or whatever. So, so that ownership is such a fundamental it's, thing. It's important yeah. in business, Amanda, because we all go through to, uh, to, to businesses that we want to support. Yes. And when we're disappointed, um, you know, not the right people come and, you know, try and mend. Mm. Uh, mm. So for me, I've learned, uh, uh, like I said, I'm in the business of service. Yes. And one of the reasons why I always tell people I don't want to scale my business mm. is because I, I'm in the business of service. Yeah. You know, and, and it's I, very personal. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah. And I do not send my PA to mm. do my you know, yeah. I mean, you do the measurements yes. yourself. Yeah. Because, yeah. because when the client comes there, they, they, they dealt with me. Mm. Why now when things are falling apart, should they deal with somebody else? Oh yeah. So oh, for yeah. me, it's going there to make sure that we still maintain the relationship. Yes. So for me, relationships are, are important, are, are way imp more important than, yeah. you know, the money. I yeah. don't put money ahead. Yeah. I always yeah, say yeah, yeah. relationships for me are far better because yes. I can make more money through relationships than Correct. just a once-off transaction. Correct. And how's business going? It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I don't want to lie. It's good. Uh, but I always say it can always get better. Of course. Uh, there's always room for, for improvement. Yes. But at this point, I, I'm extremely happy yes. uh, with how the business is. And I mean, I've... Like I said, I've always wanted to be a lifestylist. Mm. So with the new premises that we built, yes, that was the vision. So yes. I wanted to move away from just being a clothing brand to a lifestyle brand. Mm. And hence, mm. we've got the experience lounge in yes. there. So hence our partnership with the McKellen Whiskey. Mm. Hence our partnership. I just signed a partnership now with uh, Clarence Men. Oh, hey. <laughs> so we do grooming sessions as well. This nice. past Thursday, we hosted 20 uh, guys in our showroom. We did a grooming experience for yes. them. Yes. Um, and it was beautiful. Yes. So my thing is to teach. I've realized that um, a lot of people consume things that they don't understand. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the education aspect of it is very important. Mm, mm. So we do grooming experiences. Yes. Uh, women have been grooming, have been using of moisturizers, yeah. serums, and three things step. like that. You know, three <laughs> step. guys don't know those things. Uh, 
So for us, it's to educate them. Yes. To say, why do you have to use a, uh, a toner? Why do you have to use a moisturizer? Why yeah. do you have to need sunscreen? Yeah. You know? So I, 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 I host those type of events to educate the men. Yes. Because... You know, as our people, you know, we, we didn't grow up with resources. Yeah, of and course. And now we are coming into resources. But look at you. You come from <laughs> Pretoria. You didn't grow up in, in, in a home that yes. is all about, you know, the... Opulence the, and luxury. Op exactly. And, yeah, yeah. But somehow you followed your passion. Yes. and And I can tell you that now you've kind of embodied that. So even when you're telling me about grooming, I would believe you because you look groomed. You are, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know, you embody that. How important is it for entrepreneurs to first of all identify their niche, but also to embody what it is that they're doing, especially when you're a service business. Yes. How important is that? And and how do you keep it going? It's it's absolutely important in service because um, also in. In more special in service. So I, I always say people don't buy products, they buy people. People. Mm. You know, like you're saying, when you're mm. supporting a business, you're not supporting the business, you're supporting the entrepreneur. Yes. So yes. how you carry yourself, how everything, that speaks to um, how the business will grow and yes. how people perceive the business. You know, I've tried so hard to separate Theo from Mr. Slimfit. Mm. I can't. No, you can't. I, can't. I even have like two different social media yeah. accounts. The Young Ops is bigger than Mr. Slimfit, yeah. but people still call me Mr. Slimfit yes. because they associate uh, my brand with me. Yes, and yes. And because I carry it the way I do, and it's, it's you know, they see me, they see Mr. Slimfit. And the pair of you foot when you're always wearing Slimfit. I've never <laughs> seen you not wearing something that Slimfit. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, it is who you are, actually. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to carry it and embody it and... So that it, it, it's believable as well. Yes. So now with, with all the elements I'm adding into the business, actually they come from my lifestyle. Mm. So hence the grooming, mm. it's coming from my lifestyle. Yes. Um, we, we're we looking at doing uh, fragrance experiences now, nice. you know, to teach people how to shop for fragrance. You'd be shocked how many people don't know how to, uh, how to shop for things that they consume. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, I always say to people, somebody will come and say, oh, you smell nice. What's that? And you mm. say, so and so they go and buy it. But they don't test it on their skin to say, exactly. does it work with my skin? Yes. You know, does it yes. work with me? Yes, yes, yes. Does it suit my personality? Does it suit my personality? Yeah. So there's a whole lot of education that I'm focusing on when it comes to business. Yes. And I think it comes from the fact that I've, I've had a deja vu moment. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that I've found my purpose in life. Yeah. My purpose in life is teaching. Nice. And teaching doesn't mean being a lecturer. Or yes. no. My purpose in life has been teaching. And when I look back in life, I've always been given opportunities to teach. Mm. You know, when I was mm. um, uh, in varsity, um, I, I'd never done accounting in high school. Yes. I went from that to being an accounting tutor mm. in varsity. Uh, that I was teaching. And there was two accounting um, tutoring, tutoring classes in, 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 uh, in, our, in our year. Yes. And it was myself and this other lady. And my class was the one that's always full. Mm. You know, so I didn't understand it then. But as, as, as I started... It's my milkshake brings <laughs> all the boys to the yard. <laughs> but as I started understanding myself, yes. and as I look back, because also even when I started the graduate program at R&B, I was one of the, stu um, the the graduates they chose to say, when we, want, when we go for recruitments, we want you to come with. So I've always had that, you know, when I look back, I've always yes. had that sort of front line uh, role but that I, I needed to play. But I think that's because you have a teachable spirit. That's true. And, and oh. when you have a teachable spirit, people are more inclined to invite you to tables where you will have the ability to also teach or an opportunity yes, to teach. Yes. Talking about teaching before we wrap up this conversation, because I can talk to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> you and I had this conversation about um, mentorship of yes. young boys. Yes. Because, um, I mean, I think we probably spend a lot of time talking about, you know, what it is like to be a man yes. in not just modern day South Africa um, in terms of being out there and how men are treated or how you show up as a man, yes. but in your own homes, in, in your own private spaces, in your own conversations. And, and you shared with me how passionate you are about these conversations yes. for men, mm. by men, mm. and to bring up this cohort of young men and teach them how to be men. Yes. Because this is something that a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us um, in, in our homes, we don't get taught how to become so especially, you know, men. Yes, that's true. And and I mean, even our earlier conversation is around how men are, are, 
are getting left behind mm. in terms of you know your vulnerability mm. and and how you guys can actually cannot even express yourselves that's true publicly or even in your own homes because you know you've got that complex that a man <laughs> must be like this a man that's must true. be like this and in your teachable in your teachings and your teachable moments um why do you think it's so important to also not just teach young men how young boys how to be men mm. but to also infuse this lifestyle element mm, to it mm, you mm. know because i guess for you that's the platform f from which you can teach yes but why is it so important it's it's very important amanda because um growing up we we didn't have a lot of role models mm. um they were far you know the, Unreachable. Unreachable. Yeah. They were yeah. in Johannesburg. Yeah. And Johannesburg was there. <laughs> it was you know, far. <laughs> it was far. So for me, it's, I mean, th there are young guys who look at me and they think I'm unreachable. I'm far. Mm, I'm there. Mm. You know, because I'm in Johannesburg yes, as well. Yes, yes. But for me, it's important to still be relevant and relatable to them and to, to teach what I've learned mm. because I am where I am today because of a lot of men who've given me time, who've, yes. given, who, who've, who've advised me, who's, who've mentored me and uh, I am where I am today because of that. Mm. So for me, it's I always say when I see a young man, uh, I mean, I had two young men come into, into the office the other day and I mean, you could see them there. They, they even wore suits and yeah. they came in and, you know, they didn't have an appointment. I was about to go into, into a meeting with a client and, and I politely asked the client if I could speak to yes. them. And for me, they touched me. Mm. You know, um, they say they've always feel following me on social media. They've always wanted to meet me. And, mm. and I gave them time. I, 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 I listened to them. And uh, for me, it was just that, the fact that these young men, they want to be heard. Yes. You know, I yes. sat down with them and, and I listened to them. I listened yes. to their story. And I said, as much as I don't have in a lot of time, yeah. here's my number. Mm. You know, here's the office number. Please call. Mm. Set up a meeting. I'll sit down with you. Yes. And I always have time for people who, who, who are willing yes. to learn. Yes. Not people who just want a ticket and people who just want to take a, uh, a you box, know, box yeah. and take a selfie. Yeah. People who want to learn, people who are eager Yes. I always have time for them. And for me, that's important of bringing boys and teaching them in terms of um, how to become men. Mm. You know, not just in terms of um, wearing a suit, grooming and things mm. like that, but on the inside, inside as well. Yes. How do we behave yes. you know, as men? Like, what are the things that we are, we are doing that are contributing to the ills of society? Yes. How do we change those things? Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's very important. And hence, I was saying to you now that for me, I had to go back. Mm. I had to look at my, my, my relationship with my father mm. and I had to go back and say, how do I mend that? Yes. So that, because my father is very wise. Mm. He's, mm -hmm. he's very wise. And when I sit with him, I always get pearls. And I say, I need to learn more from this man so that I can teach other men as yes. well. But at the same I'm time, how do I develop a relationship with other men when I don't have a good relationship with the man that brought me to? Yeah. Right. So for me, that be, through that, it's helped me to be able to to. To, share, to, to, to pour out also unto other men. Because most of us, we pour, we pour from an empty cup. Yes, so yes, for me, I, yes. needed, I needed my father to point to my cup mm. so that I can be able to pour into mm. other men. And, and I mean, every time you talk about um, this, every time we've spoken about this, I think it's been such a, I'm pretty sure you know this now, but probably down the road, it, you're going to look back on it as such a pivotal moment in your life. Because I feel like you completely changed after that conversation. And you've said it yourself, yeah, by yeah. the way. But what do you think gets in the way, though, of those conversations with, I mean, it took you how many years to just sit down with him? <laughs> and better late than never. Yeah, but, that's true. but the conversation, the, 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 what I'm trying to unlock is, what gets in the way of those conversations early on and and almost like a um, make it a way of life type thing? What can we change as parents? I remember the day I went to have that conversation with my father, I was cringing. I was like, oh, it's going to be awkward. We're yes. going to sit there and, you know, crickets. Yes. Oh, maybe let me not do it today. Mm. But I just said, Let's, let me just go. And it was one of the most amazing days oh, I've ever had. Man. What gets in the way is those things. Mm. And also... Um, <clears throat> I think for me, what helped also was him also acknowledging, you know, because sometimes our parents as black parents, they don't mm. want to acknowledge no. that they messed up. No. You know, it's always our fault. And yeah. So for me, when he said, you know, I take responsibility of some of the things mm. and, and, and I'm willing yes. to mend yes. where you want me to mend. Mm. I think for me, that just changed the whole thing. 
that changes the game. It, eh? it does. It, especially from uh, my father's a very traditional mm. African man. Staunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, This I don't want, he doesn't want yes. it. And that's it. I did not expect that from him. Mm. And for him to come, I, I think he, the walls that were there came falling down. And, and I think this is why I'm saying, you know, these conversations, I think the more they happen, the sooner they mm. happen. But I also appreciate that parents themselves are also dealing with their own issues. That's They're true. dealing with themselves. They're dealing with their own past trauma. That's true. Their own hurt. That's true. And, and somehow we, all those things and egos then collide mm. and then nothing happens. Mm. And then down the road, you all look back and you think, oh gosh, you know, things could have been so different. So I count you incredibly fortunate to have a parent that actually owned up and mm. said, mm. I messed up here. I'm here now, but also genuinely so, right? Mm, Where you true. can see that we it's both sincere. really want this. Yeah, it's sincere. And the fact that you reached out and, you know, and he reciprocated and you guys made it happen. To me, that's just such a beautiful I story. I think it was, the timing was just perfect. Perfect, If yeah. there was such a thing. Yeah. Because also, um, <clears throat> there have been times where I tried, but it, it just didn't work mm. out. And, I just feel like at that time when it happened, like everything, and, and also like what I was saying earlier, that the fact that I'm now a husband and mm. I'm a father, there are mm. certain things that when he say them, I can relate. Correct. I can understand better. Yes, yes. Being a husband and a father. Yes, you yes. Know? And I got to also know and understand his childhood. Yeah. Because I'd never, I'd never asked him about his childhood. Mm. When he told me, and I was like, actually, it makes sense. Yes. The reason why he be, you know, he he was the way he was, mm. it's because of his childhood. Yes. And um, I remember, so one of the things I I, I did was go for counseling. Mm. Um, I remember when I was there, my my therapist said to me, um, "Don't become the father you wanted to your son. Mm. Become the father he needs." He needs. And that for me that's, was a very that's fundamental. It, it it just changed everything mm. because I was becoming the father I wanted. Yes. And not the father that he needs. Mm. So after she said that, I I, 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 I sh just switched. I feel a bit exposed here. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us do that. Of course. We do, we're trying to compensate and yes. but at the same time we're also creating childhood traumas for our kids. Right. Because they're gonna grow up and say, But you're not there. Yeah. You're like, No, yeah. but I was there. I was giving you this and like yeah. no. And like that's not I what I not needed. Want, I did not want all of those yeah. things. Absolutely. And it's actually the reason why I left corporate is because, you know, my own law, they were seven years old at the time, told me I never come to anything anyway. And that time, Mina, I'm hustling so hard oh, at man. work to make sure there's <laughs> no poverty in this house, make sure that they live a better life mm -hmm. than I did. But that day, thank God they said that to me. Thank God I listened because... Uh, yes. They put up a mirror to me and mm. said to me, yeah, you are talking about, and they were young, right? Mm. And you know, when they're at that age, there's ah, no, no filter, they the tell it to you. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but our children tell us those things all the time. Yes. We just don't listen. That's true. Because we are hearing through another layer mm. and our layer mm. is how do I give them what I didn't have? Yeah, that's true. Right? So what your therapist, okay, it's a great, th he or she is a great therapist. I hope you paid them good. <laughs> I enjoy talking to you so much. I enjoy oh, your likewise. spirit. You're such an awesome human being. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, it, uh, it, uh, mirror, I'm reflecting your, your spirit. Thank and you so much. Yeah. And I appreciate you coming out here to talk to me. I know you're very busy. He no, it's business is hectic, pleasure. but you were like, no, I'll make time for you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And oh. thank you so much for having me here. I'm honored. Oh, I'm honored. It's my pleasure. And I look forward to what's next, right? Yes. The evolution of Mr. Slim Fit. Yes. And I don't know where you go from here because already you are just like, at the peak of excellence. Do you, where, where is this? Where are we going? Where, what's what's next hey, for you? Hey, hey, it's, <laughs> hey. The road is still long. Eh? Yes. It's still long. I, I think also it's because, you know, when you have a vision, only you know. Yes. about that vision yes and people see certain things are like ah oh, but you are at the top you're like mm, hey, not yet I, I, i'm actually just still building the engine yeah. of what this vehicle is all about yeah so for me it's um sure what's next um i think i'm, I'm now more passionate about um uh, like i said about men yes and the issues that affect men and i i I really, really want to focus more on that. Yeah. You know, um, and creating that you've created the yes, space. So yes. now it's about 
consuming the yes, space. Yes, yes. Yeah. So creating a platform where men can be able to gather. And mm. Because I see it all the time. You know, I was, I was saying earlier that when, we, when I host events, mm. it could be both men and women yes. in the event. The women will leave after yes. the formalities, yes. the guys will stay mm. and it becomes something else. Mm. And somebody said to me that, you know, Theo, you might think that you're hosting events here, but this is medicine for some of us. Yeah. And so for me, because of that and what I've gone through now with, yes. with the journey with my dad, it's it's given me, it's made me more sensitive to, yes. to issues that affect men. Yes. To say yes. there's more that we need to do. Yeah. Men need a, a space where they, they, they can feel heard, where they can belong yeah. and where we can build each other. Yeah. And I'm also passionate about businesses. Yes. Um, growing, you know, businesses, uh, black owned businesses, supporting black owned businesses. Mm. I'm big on that mm. um, because I always say, you know, a lot, 99% of my clients are our people. Yes. And for me, it's also planting it back and of being course. intentional about it. Yeah. You know, because I always say, if somebody can travel from Mpumalanga to come and see me, mm. why can't I travel to Rodeport yes. to go and support somebody else? Yes. So yes. for me, I'm, I'm very passionate about black businesses as yeah. well. But at the same time, you know, it, it can't be, I don't support just because you have black no. business. No, 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 no. That's just the ticket to the game. Yes. What you do when you're on the pitch. <laughs> That's important. Because for me, it's, I, I, I always say when you're in business, it's people have to look at it and be like, wow, this is an excellent business. This is an excellent product or brand mm. or service. And by the way, it's black owned. Yes. It should be the last yeah. thing that people say. Yeah. And, and yeah. I always get, you know, I, there are people who will walk into our building, mm. you know. I'm in a space where, you know, the, the likes of you like coming and shopping of <laughs> in the <laughs> building. You know, some people would, would walk in and they don't know who we are. Yes. And when, the, when they walk into the space and, you know, we interact with them and, and when they find out that I own the business... I like okay. the look, yeah. you know, because they always think it's going to move somewhere. Behind, who, yeah, who's yeah, gonna yeah. Come. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. for me, that's humbling. Yes. And, and that's what I want for other businesses as well, black-owned business. And, and I always say to people, let us strive for excellence. Yes. Let us give our people what they deserve. Yes, yes. Because some but, people like to spend money. <laughs> Let's give them what they deserve give as them well. Give the people <laughs> what they want. But, but also I think what's, what's important is putting that best foot forward. Yes. Because, and, and I've now come to experience it with you as well, is that, you know, there are entrepreneurs who are great at what they do. However, they're sloppy. Mm. So they, they're great at the business, mm. but they're sloppy at the experience. That's true. And businesses are about experiences. That's true. You know, because at the end of the day, somebody else down the road can do something similar. Mm. And what is that experience? So I think in even in these conversations that we are having with upcoming and young young girls yeah. and guys, be it in business or, you know, just in mentorship. The conversation has to be about you cannot be touching an opportunity and acting like it's going to come again. Yeah. That's and true. especially for us black people, mm. guys, opportunities don't <sighs> just land on our <sighs> laps. We hustle so <sighs> hard, right? So every time I give someone an opportunity and I see them mess it up and they don't even own up, they treat it like I know there's tomorrow. Yeah, and I, ah, yeah. you know what, I'll apologize. And then, it's okay, uh, she'll understand. She'll ah, understand. You're a big sis. Exactly, ah, big sis. You know, oh, eh, my mamzo. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> mamzo. It work like that. Mena, I'm a client. Mm. I'm a customer. Mm. You have, the experience has got to be excellent because you may not get that opportunity again. Yeah. You know, anyway, thank you so much for, for being we can here. Talk <laughs> I know. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out. No, it's thank an you so pleasure. much for your insights. Thank you for having me. Oh. Man, there was just another very special episode of Vastly Sage. Well, what can I say about Mr. Slimfit, Mr. Excellence himself? I hope you've taken out some really key advice and insights from, from, from Theo. Theo is an incredible entrepreneur who traded corporate life for the streets of hustling. <laughs> and like he said, you know, every time you, you, you are succeeding, you're climbing another mountain, you're learning something. So be prepared to learn and have a teachable spirit. And just that conversation around humility, this is something I have found to be a key ingredient in, in, in business as well. So I wish you well with all your endeavors. Please do back yourself up because what if you succeed? Until next time, cheers for now. <laughs>